Well, without much further ado, we are going to be going live at map number one of the second game of the day. Lucid Dream starting on the CD side. Alpha Red with the dust to pick. And let's see what they do here. A nice quick boost towards short. And we, of course, have PDC. Patricius, his name he's going to be going with for this particular game. And look at QQ. Look at aggression coming out from the man. Walking up catwalk. They have a couple of players waiting for him. But they should be careful, and it's going to be SDK getting caught mid-air, spots the second player, Whoa. and a fadeaway headshot, and immediately it's going to be QQ giving his team... <laughs> what is that from QQ? He's still alive! He's looking for more. The 180 headshot, looking for the fourth kill as well. He is still very much alive, and Merold is going to be the last player left for Alpha Red. What was that from QQ? This is absolutely unbelievable, and that's the kind of thing that you don't want to be seeing if you're Alpha Red. I mean, obviously losing the pistol round is one thing, but if you're picking a map like Dust 2, throwing it in a bit of a weird one, and you're thinking, hey, you're a preparation-based team, we want to be running our strats a certain way, we want to be trying to get in there and having a good run of things, and QQ is just like, no, nah, I don't think you're going to be playing your T-side this half in particular, I don't really feel like it, I'm just going to go play my game, run up me, I'm going to shoot everyone in the head, and you're going to have a good think about why that's so good. Well, Alpha Red... They would not have been expecting the aggression, but I, I guess we kind of did, right? You, we knew it was going to be a little bit of an What region are we casting, Blair? Come on, mate. You've been here for a while. <laughs> These are some pretty sharp shots coming out from both teams. This is going to be one of those games where everyone's just clicking on each other's heads and there's going to be some messy rounds. This might be around here for Alpha Red, especially if they're patient enough to wait for Lucid Dream to go for this push in the four on five. Obviously, Lucid Dream, they can't just sit around and wait for these T's to execute on them with the Munda's advantage. Yeah, and CB, CBBK with the AUG, he does have a flashbang and is playing on the back of B-plat. So he does have the advantage here, but a second of smoke dissipates, it's going to be four deagles. Uh, and a scout as well, staring down at him. And he's going to get the first kill, he's looking for more, they're going to be lining up for him. He's going to peek on wide, and p decapitates the man. 3v3, did it have a smoke? Yes, to do. It's going to block off any vision for the CTs towards the door and the window. And uh, the PTC spraying blindly through the smoke with an MP9. Won't really find anything. 3v3, and you might be right here, Pilly. This could really go the way of Alpha Red. It could, but Lucid Dream, if they use their flashes and they smoke off the tunnel correctly, I think Genius just threw the smoke into the tunnel. They're going to throw some flashes into the bomb site, and if they hit the right timing here, this crown could be over. Oh, that was a nice flash. SDK caught dabbing, and it's all on P-Ratch. 1v3 can only find one, and a very, very nice retake coming out from Lucid Dream. They didn't kind of lose a composure, they managed to convert what could have been a disaster, a disastrous round for them. Definitely could have been, but Alpha Red, I mean, what are they going to be thinking about doing into this next round? They're keeping the economy very, very low from Lucid Dream. They forced up, but they got the one plant and a lot of kills, so definitely some thonking having to be occurring for Alpha Red at this point. Probably if I'm Alpha Red, I just want to go for some CZs, maybe some Deagles or something like that. Try to do a bit more do damage to this Lucid Dream economy before I come in hot with my buy in the next round and then try to break them in that round in particular. Alpha Red, they're going to throw the smoke over towards the Xbox. Actually, a few smokes over here on the side of them as maybe they're going to try to get up. I'd imagine they're probably just going to try to get up Catwalk and throw a bit of an execute onto that A bomb site. Ooh. But PTC's looking sharp today. Fox is pretty much limping into the next parts of the round here. And 98 damage through the door. That's got to that's gotta suck. But it is going to be the short play coming out. They have the look in the form of SDK but they're going to have to face off against Mr. QQ with the Arc Molotov going to be tossed in flash up high in the sky for him to go for the peak. It's going to blind just one player to match make their way towards the site, though. And QQ can prevent the plan. No, he can't. The bomb will get planted. And that's pretty much all they needed to do. Get the bomb down and even get a frag here as uh, PTC looking for more. Almost gets a second kill, but P but uh, P Ratch, I'm sorry, almost gets a second kill, but Patricius, PTC will find the headshot. So Lucid Dream, I don't think they're going to be too worried about it. They lose one player, that's about it. And Alpharet, of course, gets a bomb. So both teams kind of happy with the way that round played out. But now is going to be the guns coming out for the side of Alpha Red. In Lucid Dream, yeah, exactly right. Only one player lost. They're building up their money very, very nicely. Alpha Red, they got the bomb plant, which they probably didn't need, but it's definitely going to help uh, this player get the AWP into his hands. It's probably Olivia, although he doesn't have that name on the scoreboard. It is, it is Olivia, yeah. I don't know why he keeps changing his nick all the time. It's a bit of a brave wide peek into middle by Olivia there, <laughs> just looking for the frag against any other Orpa. That probably would have been the death of him, but luckily Patricia sees holding the off angle here. Now for Red, they're just very, very passively waiting for any kind of aggression to come out from Lucid Dream. 
They're probably going to go for the cat controllers. They now know that Lucid Dream are heavily leaning on long with that smoke being refreshed. Nice flash into middle is going to push PTC off the angle. And this is actually a pretty dangerous spot for Lucid Dream because Alpha Red, they've got the mid control. They've probably got cat control and the positions in terms of the rotations. It's going to be impossible for Lucid Dream to make their way from the B bomb site over towards A for the rotation. It's going to actually work out for Alpha Red because they look like they're opting to go for this A hit here as they all fall on back. They have the three players stuck towards the B bomb side, so it's going to come down to QQ with that AUG of his to kind of shut this A play down. He's got no utility to be able to buy time for the rotations either, so he's absolutely just going to have to hide and wait for the, the other players on his team to try and take this mid control as the execute comes in. It does come in. Rotation's coming in as well. It's going to take a while. Then QQ standing on top of Bob. He hasn't been blinded yet. Molotov, smokes, flashbacks. Everything's being thrown in. And it's going to be QQ. He finds one. He's being a thorn. He's taking a bit of damage. Spots the second guy out. Goes for the second kill. Gets the frag. The bomb will, however, get planted. Getting a little too over eager. Trying to prevent the bomb plan. And he's going to get punished for it. But S2K falling means the 2v4 P-Ratch will fall. And it's all on Fox. Stuck in Goose against four CTs who are looking for his head. He does find one, but that's going to be all he's going to find as Lucid Dream with another very successful retake. And if you pause the middle of that round and you said, hey, Blair, who's going to win this round? The T is coming up catwalk with a fury against one player or while everyone's on B or, you know, you're poised over on Alpha Red. You probably would have picked Alpha Red nine times out of ten. But Olivia, he doubles up with the frag. Great supportive flash from Genius out from Long there. And he's able to hold on. I mean, I wouldn't even call it hold on. He was pretty much killing the entirety of the enemy team by himself. And then the rest of the boys from B came and took mid control and came in for the retake before the T's could get in good post play positions so this is not looking like a convincing map pick from alpha red at the moment it's looking like shambles it they're really relying on some of these set plays and executes coming out time and time again which are just not working for them and one thing which caught me a little bit by surprise was the fact that they they had so many smokes they use all of it for the execute i'm sure they had an ex extra one as well which they could have used towards where uh, uh QQ was holding, just prevent vision, instead it went for the fights. And especially against the AUG at that headshot angle, it's going to be always the advantage on the side of the CTs. The peak's going to come in, and it is going to be Olivia, aka P-Ratch, finding PDC. So opening kill at least goes to Wave Alpha Red, as KNT said, the timing is off, but he still gets the frag. Actually, it's going to be Meryl's helping his teammate out, and QQ found out as well. Everyone's dead in a blink, and it's all on one fight. He's got the AWP, but he's all alone on the wrong bomb site. And Alpha Red, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they're going to get the first round on board. They are indeed, and what a weird round for them to get. The protocols just weren't even really in place properly from the CTs in that round in particular. It felt like they should have had long control ages ago, but they were just messing around with how long it was taking to release those flashes and get the smoke into those long doors. And Alpha Red takes advantage of that. They get out towards long very late into the round and find the timing to be able to get those picks. That causes the rotation from that mid to B player on the CT side who runs straight into Olivia's AWP. And at that point, you've lost three out of five of your players in the first, you know, 15 seconds or whatever. The round's always going to be over from there. One of Flies is trying to hold on to his AWP because the money's looking a little bit sketchy for Lucy. Not too bad at, the point, at this point. They can go for a buy pretty soon uh, into the next round, but... Moving forward after that, if they do continue to lose rounds, things are going to get a little bit harder. Things will definitely get a little bit harder, but for now, it is going to be a buy for Lucid Dream. They still have enough money in the bank to go for a pretty solid buy, although I think a gun will be dropped over towards CBBK. There we go, an AUG being picked up by him. And for Alpha Red, they need to press their advantage here. Their money is not exactly that great. Another attack coming in from the AWP of Olivia's. Wanna fly down to 12 points of health, and he's gonna be playing this a little bit more safely. And what a beautiful read there from PDC. He does find Olivia, but a quick trade, insta trade coming in from KNTZ, ensuring the man advantage is not taken by Lucid Dream. Yeah, and that's a really good position for these T's to be in. I like how they're applying pressure to middle here. They're trying to cause these CTs to rotate and panic as if the mid to B player was gonna come in. Over over towards that long A area, you've got Genius just holding on in the pit. So if Alpha Red, they make their play up this catwalk area, it's going to be very difficult for Lucid Dream to hold, considering how little utility that they have. Alpha Red, I mean, they, they need to not lean so heavily back on this execute that is so telltale. It has so many signs that Lucid Dream can react to and so many smokes that Lucid Dream can play around, although that long control is going to be much harder for Alpha Red if they do want to split the A bomb site to actually execute that. 
looking like they're going to go for this mid to B though. And as long as they deal with CBBK pretty quickly, he's the only one with Util over here. But Wanna Fly opens up towards B tunnels. That's the only player in that part of the map for Alpha Red. So this is a very one dimensional push coming out. And CBBK gets fragged as a smart thing, falls on back, smoking off the window, forcing Alfred to push in through the smoke. And they're going to be pushing in, and SDK trying to be cheeky, pushing into the smoke, will be found out, and it's going to be Lucid Dream. Not only do, do they win the round, but they also keep four players alive. However, for Alfred, they will be able to go for the buy, because at one round they won, they kept almost every single player alive there. They did indeed, and this is one of those situations where a, a European side on like a map like Dust2 in that kind of scenario, they would just burst out Cowwalk and take the fights with the AKs, knowing that they have the man advantage. Alpha Red, this is one of their greatest weaknesses as a team, I feel like. They can be quite hesitant. Oh my god, that's the second time Genius has got... Uh, um, that's not a bro broadcast friendly word I was about to use uh, over at long as you know they are flashing these T's but he's still getting himself picked so man advantage again for the, what feels like the third round in a round row for alpha red lose a dream they have two players over here towards middle because there's been so much contention in that part of the map form from alpha red no oh. one's gonna die though those dream though, they're not really... The fact that two players towards mid should tell Alpha Red that it's probably just one guy holding towards ADA bombsite. So you can see the rotation slowly taking, pla taking place though, but they're not really making haste. And that's going to allow QQ to kind of move into CD spawn. All the Lucid seem like they just want to commit to having two players towards mid. You can see both Wannafly and uh, QQ playing towards CD spawn, but with those flashes towards long, PTC is going to be calling out. And they both check what? the blue. What is this from Alpha Red? That is just disastrous. And a triple kill for PTC. That should never have happened. And Wannafly is going to strike. And it's going to be Meryl's left alone. Pilly, tell me what went wrong there. They're just, the spacing is so bad. They're not checking the angles correctly. There's no communication about who's going to clear what side of the, the, the long A area. Not only that, but just why did they even give up that catwalk control in the center of the map in that scenario? Regardless, all five of them went to that long A area, giving up some crucial parts of the map. And, you know, so many problems with that reaction from Alpha Red. And they picked this map in particular. So seeing that they seem so confused and, and so hesitant in certain uh, scenarios, and it just really feels like they don't have a fundamental understanding of when they're in those four on fours, when they're finding these man advantages, how to convert the round, leaves me puzzled as to why they picked this map in the series in the first place, Blue. That is a question which even I can't really answer at this point in time. Unfortunately, Pilly, that was that was a little disappointing, I won't lie. Uh, they had such a good advantage. They knew where two of the players were. They could have assumed that there would at least be another player towards the B bomb side. That A bomb side was ripe for the picking. Just said, like you mentioned, go up towards Cat. You have the uh, you have the higher ground advantage. You can shoot the players coming in from CD spawn and could just like force you towards the A bomb side, but. Rotation was slow. They just, like you said, gave up cat control, gave up mid control, and then, of course, like the spacing completely off. No one checking that corner, which usually you expect a CD player to be sitting towards, and that's going to force him to go for just pistols and some armor. And they will go for the bite next round. <laughs> and a late walk down suicide as Fox will be picked off by PTC, who's having a pretty fun time here with the AWP. I can only explain this to be one of those matchups where Alpha Red is terrified of Lucid Dream. Against any other team, we would back these guys in with a chance. But past results and how this game is unfolding and the way that they vetoed after, you know, losing Nuke and, and certain picks like that, it can only be explained as they are terrified of Lucid Dream right now. And, and with the way that Lucid Dream's playing, I probably would be too. Here they go for this half buy into an A execute, which didn't really work last time, but this time PTC is going to be the one playing retake. Oh, this is a sitter there. PTC misses another one, and he will be punished for it. KNT is dead, but look at QQ like a demon, like a wraith in the smoke, getting to, as Pira just reply back, making it a 2v2, bombs down. So that's kind of mission accomplished, but they'll be looking to do a little bit more damage. Long range duel being taken by PTC, sorry, by Olivia against uh, Genius. And it's all on Merrill's. He's just got a CZ and a Dream. He finds one, won't get the second. Quick trade as Lucid Dream make it 7-1. to one. I just want to touch upon what he said about how they seem terrified. Uh, I was speaking to Alex from uh, from Boot Dreamscape earlier, uh, like a week back in Mumbai. And I was just talking to them. I'm like, you know, Alfred playing phenomenal CS. Like, why do they seem to struggle against you guys and against uh, Lucid Dream? And what he said was... And he pretty much echoed what he said. He, they seem to play scared against us. They and do. Against they look Dream. so hesitant and scared. They don't look like the team that took out Greyhound at all, Blair. Why is that? Why is that? Do they need some counselling is the question here. 
perhaps maybe they've got a few of those Asia CS woes like you, Blair. Maybe you guys can have a nice little sit down and a chat in a circle. Asia CS Anonymous, everyone just get up one at a time and talk about your feelings. Asia CS Anonymous, ACA, I think that could be something we could, we, <laughs> we, we, we could kind of work with that, right? Like have Vented sit down and like, so Vented, how's Tai Lu going? And he's like, I don't know what to do. I don't want to talk about it. Now <laughs> I'm just releasing vlogs to get, you know, buff my cha paycheck a little bit more and get a YouTube channel going because this team's going nowhere right now. Brutal. <laughs> but you know what? At, at least even the Tai Lu have kind of had a, a downturn, so to speak. At least we do have Vici who have really stepped up the game. So that's a good thing. But... That's a story for another day. For now, it is 71 for Lucid Dream, who have had a dream start on a map pick from Alpha Red. And the buy will come in once more for Olivia and his merry men. SG in the hands of Merrill's a gun I really do like. That that first bullet accuracy is nuts on that gun. It's indeed. They're going to go for the boost, but unfortunately, a little bit too late as PTC makes his way back towards that Guardian angle. Lucid Dream, I feel like they threw a bit of utility towards that long A area, but this time they're changing up their setup uh, over here towards short. They really want to fight for short once Alpha Red goes and takes that part of the map. But Alpha Red thus far, I mean, they've only really been putting pressure on mid and they're doing it again. It's been to literally no success thus far. These CTs are getting aggressive up here towards short now, Blair. Oh, that's a great re-aggression coming out from Lucid Dream. And they know, they know what's happening. Wanafly is going to get the frag. Both the players playing towards the B-bomb side. And that's going to be... An, what a play, though. Genius finds the two. And it's going to be QQ still sticking around. Will he make his escape? Yes, he will. Molotov. And if they want to go for the kill, it's going to run it through the flames. Oh. And of course, it's going to be Olivia just pushing it through the flames like Daenerys. He's still alive. I don't even know how. And all of a sudden, from a 4v2, it's a 2v2. And a bomb is going to get planted. But look at where his team is. It is. What is going on? This is sheer madness. This is pure madness. Gonna start walking, which is gonna give these a uh, play. What is one of how does he know, Blair? Does he actually <gasps> know about this? No, surely not. I don't think he does, but he's given a sound cue, I do believe. An SDK with the flag. This could be it. The this problem is, for the flag. It's, it's planted for plat though, so he's not actually in position if they make it onto the bomb site. And P Ratch with the op. He's gonna find another one, and then of course it's decay. Finally, P. Raj does burn alive, but three kills for him, for Mr. Olivia. What an absolute madman. Yeah, and look, it's great that Alpha Red got that round on the board. It's great that they put Lucid on an eco, um, but at the end of the day, if that's the way that you're gonna get a round on your Dust2 T side, rather than anything that makes any kind of logical sense, then I'm not really gonna back you in the rest of this series. You can't just have Olivia go shoot, running through Molotovs and shooting people with an AWP who aren't looking at him. That's not a convincing way to be picking up these rounds, Blair. I completely agree with you, but it is fun to watch. True, and that's what we're here for. It's the entertainment value, really. The, the tie matchup that we we're all waiting to see, although, you know, we hype it up and we hype it up, but Alpha Red, they're having all kinds of uh, mental problems, I feel like, in this game thus far, and I can't blame them the way that Lucid are playing. I feel like Lucid's just bullying them out of the server. It's like we're in the schoolyard and they're just pushing each other over right now, but Lucid Dream, they're like that six foot, six foot tall kid who's 14 and everyone else is just the normal size. <laughs> Well, <laughs> right now, which is kind of interesting. Like, they have pistols, but look at the way Alpha is approaching this. So they're terrifying. so scared. They're getting bullied by a bunch of pistols. <laughs> Bunch of deagles, old mates are just peeking from short. And they're gonna walk in, they're gonna walk into the stack, the three man stack. Look at this. This could be disastrous here. And they're gonna announce a presence, and it's CBBK. He's baiting it out, he's baiting it out. He's gonna go for the reload. They're gonna actually get the kill. Will they expect the third guy though? <laughs> no scope comes in, and somehow it looked like they're walking into the trap, but they just ripped that trap wide open. And Lucid, sorry, Alpha Red will get the third one on board here. I don't see, uh, I don't see, uh, Patricia's Mr. PTC doing anything crazy, but. What? W why are they playing so scared? I don't get it. I don't know, man. I can't. I couldn't tell you. Well, an AK will be retrieved by Mr. PTC, so that's that's something for them. And he's looking for, he's trying to like, you know, inflict some economic damage, but they will all try to hold onto the guns through mid. And PTC will find nothing, but he will at least have the AK-47 going into round number 
11, I don't believe this going to be. Lucid Dream, they've had crazy economic control this entire game, which makes their CT side on Dust2 much, much harder to run. I feel like one of the ways that you can really put the CTs in the bin, in on, on this half in particular, when you're on the T side of Dust2, is keeping their economy nice and honest, but unfortunately, every single time that Alpha Red went for one of these half pies where they had the CT sense and armor, they're not getting any kills, Blair, they're not keeping the economy honest at all, and that's making their job of coming back into this game 10 times harder than it has to be. And times harder than it has to be. Well, at least they do have three rounds. From what looked like at one point it would be like probably 10-0 to Alpha that with the way they were playing, but it's still early days. Still the first map. It is their map pick. They still might be able to pull something off here. And the buy is of course going to be kind of slightly favoring Alpha right here. They have everything to work with. Yeah, they do, and they're going for this play that you see a lot of European teams do, but PTC's been boosted up in CT from right at the start of the round. What a call from Lucid. Not that they even needed them. Everyone's dead again. Yeah, that's something that you would see a lot of European teams do, where they had the two players run down mid right at the start. You throw the Xbox smoke to throw them off, make it look like a default, and then all of a sudden two of the lads are out mid and catching that mid to B player off guard who's looking for those AWP picks towards mid or looking for a little bit of aggression. But it's like Lucid Dream read them perfectly. PTC right from the start of the round was boosted up waiting for that mid to play B player to come out. It's like Alpha Red there, you know, Lucid Dream is just in their heads right from the start. There's five alive on the CT side. Oh, it's you know so hard to watch. You know what else is in uh, Alpha Red's head? What? Bullets. Yep, a lot of bullets. A lot of bullets. 8-3 and once again, Alpha Red find themselves staring down the barrel of what could be uh, an actual reset here. They have another buy-in, of course. That they can easily try and turn, uh, turn things around because the money is not exactly super great for Lucid Dream. And again, another tag coming in. There you go. From Olivia. Olivia is the only talking point, really, I feel like, uh, unfortunately, for Alpha Red. And this is such a different team from what I saw playing at. at Literally, how many minutes ago <laughs> in the last series that they played in the Colo qualifier? It's just this matchup play. I know. It's they uh, got to get over it, though. They, you know, you're going to be playing your, your Thai rivals pretty often in these SEA qualifiers, Blair. You got to get over it at some point. You got to, they got to make it happen. But we can also touch a little bit upon how well Lucid Dream are playing, right? They're reading this like an open book. Everyone's yep. hitting the shots. QQ is being an absolute beast. Uh, but then again, you know, there's so much you can read into it because they're not really getting punished enough. They're not really getting tested, so to speak. As long control has been rested by Alpha Red, that smoke is going to be a tilt and it's going to be all about timing. PTC with the big green and he spots a player in the pit. Scoped in, Whoa. finds the frag, just out peeks Olivia, nade to follow up, doesn't, oh, takes a chunk out of a player, Flash is raining in, and the QQ finds one, no scope, doesn't land, and Fox has to do, uh, turns it around and gets the kill. CBB game gets a frag through the smoke, this is absolute sheer madness, I absolutely love it. So here's the safe plant as Fox is, he's going to try and hold on from the goose area. No Molotovs to flush these T's out of position off the post plant, but they're going to slow down the CTs a lot. CBBK is going to get flashed in by one of Fly, but they drop it a little early, which is a bit of a missed opportunity for the CTs to get a bit of a freebie. Indeed, and now CBBK announces his presence. The AWP will not miss. Fox will get the frag, and Alpha Red will get another round back. And that... It's finally, it's not going to break the economy of Lucid Dream. I think they can still eke out a, a buy if they really do want mm, to. And if I, I, was, I was them, I would really go for it right now. Really? I think, yeah, well, it looks like they're going to do a bit of the old money evening. Where one of your boy PTC is going to give him a pretty good chance to win the round with the AWP. And the rest of the guys are just going to buy some pistols around that. I, I like this approach here from Lucid Dream. Could definitely work out for them if they keep PTC nice and active. Unfortunately, he's missed his opportunity to find a pick as Alpha Red come and take this long control. My roles is, is he floating. Doing his best is he doing his Trinity uh, impression? I think so. I think he might have been uh, over at the Thai Temple a little bit too long today. He's already ascended into some kind of godly form and he's floating in midair. Can we, can we like switch over to... Uh, I, I do believe that is uh, May Rolls. Who yep. is doing? Who's kind of like stuck in the air? I, oh, I, I think we're going okay, to replay. Okay, so this might be yeah, this might be a round restart. Yeah. But the problem is that that is actually sad for Lucid Dream because they went for a bit of a curveball in terms of the buy. Yeah. But Alpha Red's already heard the AWP shooting, which would at the same time that, that might that, that, well it, it'll change up how they play. But they might assume it's a buy as well and like all kinds of like second 
second uh, levels I, of thinking and madness where you just yeah. Like, if, if I was if I was uh, who's this? If I was DBBK right now, I'd just be staying towards. Oh, now okay, yeah, it's gonna be reset. But now Alfred's gonna know. Oh, they just had one off, and the rest of them had pistols. Yeah, this is interesting. Oh, Mer oh, he died. Oh, did he oh, fall down? That's unfortunate. That just sucks. It was so cool, like stuck in midair. It was I mean, almost like we could talk a little bit more about how Lucid Dreams playing. I like how they keep. I mean, they're gonna be aggressive anyway, Blair. Like we've seen these guys play a couple games at this point, but I like how disruptive they're playing on this curveball approach from Alpha Red. They know that Alpha Red won't be too comfortable on this map in particular. So if you're gonna be really aggressive and not let them play their game on a bit of a weird map pick or whatever, it's gonna make way. Uh, it's gonna make it way harder for Alpha Red to sort of uh, make this weird pick work for themselves. Although they really halftime like soccer break is a good way to sort of settle the tension. This kind of reminds me back in 19. Uh, I think it was 19. 17 or 1916 during World War One, there was a Christmas truce where the Allied and Axis forces actually called the truce on Christmas Day and they played football and stuff. And then it got back to killing each other, as we're going to be ha having right now, as soon as the pause is done. A little bit of history lesson right there. Oh my god, Blair, this is why they pay you the big bucks, man. I know, right? But I don't think I would have heard that from anyone else. Well, you got to watch a lot of National Geographic and stuff like that for that. Yeah, that's what I do. I like watching nature shows and war shows. Like listening to some, you know, good old David Attenborough breaking down some wonderful <laughs> life and then put on some Metallica, just the day in the life of Blair. <laughs> yeah, the contrast for you. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to watch that. But <laughs> the, the thing is, you know what I love? I'd like to see David Attenborough, like, narrating a documentary on Asian counter strike. <laughs> like, imagine, right? I don't think... I think that would stress him out too much. I don't think he'd be able to perform... <laughs> But, th but think about it. Like, think about how cool it'd be. And here we have a wild PDC. Not really sure what he's doing, but um, seem you know, he's here on we an go. adventure. Although, like, yeah. I, I, you know what? I would watch that. An Asian <laughs> CS documentary narrated by Richard Attenborough and produced by BBC and on Netflix. I would watch the hell out here of that. Here we have Asian team in international tournament. They seem to be choking and unfortunate. Although that might all change this year, I, I have a bit of a feeling, especially these Southeast Asian teams. I've got, I'm rooting for you guys. Come on, boot. Don't let me down. MVP PK, I want to see you guys at IM Sydney banging people out of the server. I want to see Lucid Dream, who've just qualified for Dallas, banging people out of the server. You kind of remind me of a younger, uh, more optimistic and fresh-based me <laughs> uh, a couple of a few years back. And then uh, I had to say optimism and you seem belief in Asian CS and then I started getting some gray hair, got some wrinkles, uh, started getting PTSD and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I completely agree. I think we should have uh, an Asian CS uh, anonymous group where I would probably be like the main guy sitting there and like, why guys, why do you do this to me? <laughs> I love no, them, you can't do that as the host of the group. You got to get them to talk about their problems and be understanding. You can't persecute them, Blair. I got you problems gather them as well. all together with the hope of, you know, making them feel better, but instead you just BM them. Unbelievable. Well, this guy. One day, you know, I got to give it back to them because they have made me lose a lot of hair watching the games. But uh, you know what? I don't think so. I mean, look at it. It seems to be flourishing, in my opinion. I am still balding. But the point is, <laughs> the point is, Pelly. Asian CS has come a long way. Uh, of course, like for me personally, I've been watching like 1.6 for a long time from back in the day and all that. And back then we had MVP, uh, the MVP PK guys, where uh, they were known yeah, as Pro we made Fox Project, uh, Project KR, yeah, that we Project made Fox. KR, yeah, yeah, all these guys. And we had WNV with Savage yep. and Jungle and all these old school Chinese boys. And they could hang with the best. And I think that's mostly one thing at those, waiting. Mostly at those regional tournaments and stuff like that that were actually hosted in their region of the world. Didn't they struggle a little bit more when they had to go th into Europe and whatnot? Yeah, they did, they did it. But they were always like a team who could potentially, you know, reach if you the playoffs. step onto their turf, you better watch out. Yeah, pretty much. And that's something I've been waiting for. I think we kind of have that in the form of BG and Tyloo now. It's just about the rest of the team stepping up to that, right? Like an MVP, like we have, of course, like these two teams playing right now. And uh, I think it's high time that we saw a Thigh team considering the amount of talent in that country really raise the level and be considered like a top three team from Asia. Like a team that, even if you're a top 10 team in the world, should be a little wary of. And unbelievably, I like, obviously, my, actually my roles has disconnected from the server previously. Um, I'm pretty sure that's just a case of, I mean, how hot it gets in Thailand. Your computer's going to break down. At some point, the aircon's got to give out. Like, it's just unbelievable over there. Over here, it's a little humid as well. And that's the thing with a lot of these Asian CS teams, as well as, a, as, a, as like it is 
in the Australian summer. Like me growing up playing games, I had plenty of overheat, you know, good old PC overheats. And then you just get disconnected in a very key round of the competition. And uh, you get a little bit upset, can be a little bit tilty. What's the worst, th what's the most tilty thing you've ever done while playing a video game? Oh, probably playing Greyhound on um, national New Zealand television. You know, we were just like filling in for a, for a Chiefs team or whatever. And we had a clan tag, need to poo. And the guy, uh, the admin says, you got to take your clan tag off, man. You're not allowed to have need to poo. That's not national TV ready. And I said, mate, I'm playing a guy called Dick Stacy. Get him to change his name. I'm pretty sure that dicks well, are a little bit more offensive. Yeah, but, 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 but it, could, it could very well be, you know, Richard Stacy. And that was the most tilting. I can't have my clan tag, but he gets to call himself Dick Stacy. That's pretty. Um, that's pretty upsetting, to be honest. Well, yeah, but but what did you do? About but we it? had to take it off, obviously. Did you rage after that? Did you break anything? Oh well, we got 16 fought after that, Blair. That's what happened. Life's hard that way. Yeah. They took away my clan tag. They took away my map. <laughs> Your dignity. I've got and you nothing lost left, Flair. That's why I'm here. That's this why you where all the all, the lonely that's souls where that all can't of play us can't. CS. Yeah, same here. Up. Same here. I'm just. I'm like, yeah. I know Counter Strike. I probably can teach some of the Asian teams something here and there, and then they just like completely dismantle me, where I don't get an opportunity to even like rattle off a shot. You know, I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna stick to casting. I'm gonna get to casting. I think I can probably do something there. Welcome to the club, Mitch. Thank you. I, I really appreciate being here in the old broken down Counter-Strike boys. Um, really great place to be. You can barely move your limbs. Uh, I'm losing my voice. It's great. I'm really enjoying it. No, don't really have much to add to that. But yeah, we are a sorry bunch indeed. But you know what? End of the day, we still like Counter-Strike. And right now we do have some technical issues, as you can clearly see at the bottom over there, ladies and gents. Uh, some internet connectivity issues. I'm not too sure when we're going to be resuming with the game, but that's okay. Pilly and me can just talk stuff for, for quite this a while. This has been a very uh, cathartic and therapeutic little uh, rant from me. I'm, I'm really enjoying my time here. I'm really hoping that, you know, with the amount of time I've been given to work out my issues, that Alpha Red can take time to work out both their mental block in this series in particular and their actual technical issues at the same time. You know, that would be really great. That would be great indeed. But for right now, for, for Lucid Dream though, I mean, they're looking really solid here. And bear in mind, the second map's gonna be Mirage, where a map where Alpha Red have traditionally struggled, especially in the T side, where they struggle quite a bit. And like you said, when they played against Greyhound, when they played against even MVP on the CT side, they started playing like they really don't give a damn, like, you know, full on aggression, and that worked out for them. But lo if you just look at the body language, I mean, obviously you can't see the body language, but you can ma make out, but, you can, but we can make out the way they're playing right now. It is, it, it is kind of looking like that they are struggling mentally, so to speak, against their domestic rivals. But we do have fresh information coming in from the admin team, from the production team, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like one of the players has, uh, is having some technical issues with his PC, so we will be cutting to a very quick break, but don't go anywhere. This Thai Derby will be back.
ladies and gentlemen. We are back with the game. Do apologize for this short little delay, but uh, it looks like, I do believe it was Meryl's PC kind of conked out there, but I think it looks like everything's sorted out, so the game will resume. The first map where Alpha Red are looking a little rough around the edges at the moment. Do you reckon power supplies are actually cheaper in Southeast Asia? The amount they probably die out to the heat in the middle of, you know, important matches and such, that probably brings the price down a little bit. Cause I don't think it's that bad. The life bad. expectancy is just like RIP. I mean, you say that, but it's happened. It's happened to me before. Regardless, though, finally back into the game. Is it going to be the same as we saw last time? P PTC, he didn't go for the AWP this time around with around the pistols. He's gone for a rifle. Mixing things up, you know, but that's a bit sad because I was liking the way that buy was looking. Regardless, Alpha Red, they have a little bit more info to lean back on in terms of how they feel like the economy is probably looking for Lucid Dream in this round in particular. So they're going to be playing very passive, very anti eco. Nice little boost there. I like the setup from uh, Lucid Dream. That is something that tried a couple of times on their, especially in the eco rounds, this uh, kind of a semi V stack. This time it's almost a full investment. The thing is, QQ, with that Deagle, it's got to be instrumental in holding down this uh, mid push of the two players waiting to burst on through. Flash is going to be popping out. QQ caught out, and he's getting hunted down. The two players still outside towards window. He's going to be smoked off, and it's going to be contact play taking place because they push towards mid, and it's going to be CBBK who just finds, but gets taken down, but PTC. The fact that he has an M4 and is still going to be going for this, and they're just going to be walking into the stack. Yes, they have the they have the weaponry advantage, but it's going to be QQ pushing into the smoky finds one, but it's going to be SDK one v three, make that a one v one. It's going to be genius. So he's pushed in. He's got the op smokes off the entrance to its tunnels, and now it's a one v one alpha red around. They should have won ten out of ten times, and now it's looking very very rough indeed. Here's the thing: you can actually see that bomb's light going off in the edge of the smoke. Obviously, you can see it much better now because the smoke's plumed in a different way, but th obviously, the lack of the armor could be the end of Genius here unless he hits the shot pretty quickly. Time. Oh, what is that? Oh, no, he's going to stick around, though, when SDK clutches out the 1v3. That could have been just heartbreak for Alpha Red. That was, that was such a weird round. And I think he only had one kill or something before that. He literally just did the heavy lifting to be able to bust them out of that situation in particular. And now heading into the 14th. Two more rounds to play in this half. Their money's cooked because Alpha Red lost so many to those pistols. And now potential for Lucid to reset or get reset. Now far they've got the information over towards Long. They know there's no one from Lucid Dream playing there, so they're probably going to head in that direction and take control of that area. My question is, do they have the smokes from this side of the map towards Short and CT, or are they just going to try to run up Long and across their good flash to push PTC off the line? But the thing is that Lucid, they have control of Catwalk, and they can come and take mid, they can come and push tunnel if they deal with Foxes. So this is a very one-dimensional power for Red. There's the cross smokes as they're going to try to get across. And this is going to be a full retake from the CT side. Fox needs to do great work in middle here to make this much more convincing from Alpha Red. Nice little pre-fire there, forcing PDC back as Fox with a Galil. Just will find one on the on the passive lurk. But the bomb getting planted, oh no. they have complete control of long as well. This is going to be a very hard retake for Lucid, Lucid Dream. 100%. The utility usage wasn't that great actually from Alpha Red. I can't believe Lucid's coming in for this one looking at the positions though. Oh, that's got to hurt, though. But the retake will be coming in. They do have the kit. One play coming from CD spawn. It's going to be one to fly. And Genius with that smoke. That smoke could be actually kind of useful. It's Patricia's going to find SDK. And now KNTZ behind the card. They haven't spotted him out yet. And he's going to go for the spray. Misses everything. It's all on Mayrolls in a 1v4. Makes it a 1v2. Just sticking the bomb, though. And he will run out of bullets as he gets taken down as well. That was an atrocious hole from Alpha Red. They weren't fighting together at all. Half of them were hiding, half of them were taking duels with the CTs. There was no protocols put in place before that retake came in, and they had plenty of opportunity to do so. Plenty of time to think it through, plenty of time to talk about how they're going to play off of each other, and none of that was present at all. So Lucid Dream get away with what should have been a pretty difficult retake to convert. Now Alpha Red are going to be busting out uh, Long A with a mist thrown smoke. Lucid Dream, same thing once again. But the only the difference is this time that Alpha Red, they don't have the same weaponry and utility that they had in the last round. It's going to be even harder for this Long A play to work. So instead, Alpha Red, they're going to head back towards mid or maybe towards B. But I don't really think that's going to give them better odds of winning this round than they would have had if they just headed back up Long A again. 
Well, that could be very much the case here, but they look like... I don't think they much ha they have any information to really base this off, but they look like they wanted to really go for this B hit. They do indeed. ZBBK's got a molly and a, f a flash to help out one to fly, but apart from that, these B players are completely out of utility. The problem is that Lucid Dream, they're taking mid control right now. This is excellent timing for them. They're going to get so much information and potentially a very fast flank here as they storm out B. Oh, 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 I've never seen one of my struggle so hard to hit a spray there, but he does want to get a kill before it gets taken down. And SDK getting the opening kill is going to give the advantage to Alpha Red. Bear in mind, they have the scout, they have a goal, they don't have much, but the QQ again with a flank. He finds a frag. Genius is flirting with danger here. And the problem here for the Lucid Dream are they are out of utility. The flash, the last flash bomb and QQ is going to be used up, but look at the T's, they are trapped towards the B-bomb side. Genius finally gets taken down. Patricius with the AWP. That is, of course, Mr. PTC. He really misses these shots. And they're going to cross on over. Patricius lands a headshot. Bomb down. 17 seconds on the clock. A 2v2. And it's going to be Olivia. Is he going to stick this? Yes, he is indeed. KNTZ finds both the frags. And Alpha Red will somehow manage to steal the final round of this half. I've never seen the T's so hesitant to cross to the side, but waiting around works out beautifully for them, so they're able to come away with that one regardless. It's a 9-6 lead for Lucid Dream. 9-6 lead. Well, Alpha Red at least managed to get six rounds on board from what looked like it would be kind of a runaway half for uh, Lucid Dream. So 9-6 is the scoreline, and when we're back, we will resume with the second half of the first map of this best of three series. And we are 
back with what is going to be in the second half of this first matchup between these two Thai teams. It's going to be Alpharet against Lucid Dream Philly. It kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of been surprising so far. I mean, if you look at the odds, it kind of makes sense now, right? The way this game has played out so far. Alpha Red have always been a back foot. But then again, I th we've had this discussion earlier. It seems like a mental block for these guys against their uh, their countrymen. Yeah, but regardless, I mean, the breakup of the momentum with the long pause might have given them an opportunity to actually pull themselves out of the pin and get six rounds on the board. Heading into the CT side, things could sort of turn around a little bit more. That's the thing that can sort of make a bit of a difference in terms of these long pauses sometimes is when you have a team like Lucid Dream that's always so aggressive, always so momentum-based, when you have to wait around for quite a while, that can sometimes give a little bit of an edge to a team like Alpha Red who, you know, Obviously, if you're losing multiple rounds in a row, very, very quick succession, you can start to get a little bit disheartened. But if you have a little bit more time to reflect and think about things, you know, you might have a bit of a different outlook. And I've just been informed, I could be wrong here. I was thinking, like, the after Merrill's disconnected, the player who joined in was Merrill's joining in from his coach's PC. It was the coach but joining it in is from the coach's yeah, PC. It is a coach actually playing right now, right. which is not going to be... Uh, great for Alpha when it comes to this firepower because Merrill is one of the star players. Well, maybe it will be the case of, you know, the coach is just as good as Alex and he comes in and he's, you know. Him in DSN. Yeah. Yeah, when he's just like top rank like a madman. Yeah. There we go. So it is going to be Alpha Red already in the back foot. I do believe like it's going to be a temporary issue that Merrill will be back. It's not like he's away for the entire game. For now, we will. Oh, he's back. He's back in the server. That's he's great. He's bought a new power supply. That is lightning fast timing to get back for and forth from the tech store. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, though, especially with the traffic, right? But the Alpha Red now on the CD side on their map pick. Bear in mind, this is the map pick coming from Alpha Red. Look at the aggression being shown by P Raj, by Olivia, and he's going to open things up, destroys PTC. And is he going to stick around? Yes, he is indeed. Finally, will fall on back. He's got back up to form his teammate towards Cat, who's going to ensure that his teammate will be able to uh, get away to safety. So, early opening pick from Alpha Red and Lucid Dream with a surprisingly very, very passive uh, default. Yeah, here. that's what I was about to say. It's like the roles are reversed. <laughs> exactly what we saw from Lucid Dream on their CG pistol is just them getting the face of the opposing team and uh, Alpha Red just sort of sit around, but this time, oh, okay, <laughs> what, is, what is he doing? I don't know. He's got his knife now. He's <laughs> jumping around in the middle. Uh, oh, that, 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 that yes. short given up right there, and now they're immediately going to press their advantage. Flash, I'm not really going to blind SDK, oh. and oh, oh, it hit shots like that. That's all you need to do. Finds another one in the fade away. Finally gets taken up by Genius, but it is going to be oh. Mr. Pirach, a.k.a. Olivia, to strike. Finds both the frags, headshots galore, and Alpha Red will take the second pistol round. If Olivia is as good at clicking with the AWP as he is with the USP on the heads. Going frags. forward into this half, then I'd be scared if I'm Lucid Dream. He was kind of like the player I was watching out for for this lineup, and he's like really turned up here. The AUG will come up for the man, M4 for Fox, while the rest of them will be wielding a mix of uh, MP9s and Fermat Romero's. Utility is kind of sparse, though, all things considered. For Lucid Dream, it is the full eco. They have just a P250 in the mix on the hands of Genius, and they're going to be just barreling to the deaths. But that being said, who gets blocked in the face? The P250 comes to play as well, and they're actually going to get the bomb down, and things are looking a little rough here. And they're going to keep pressing their advantage. Oh Another frag God. coming out from Genius. That P to 50 is doing <gasps> so much damage. Another kill from He's one frag. He's got no head clock. armor, player. He's got no head armor. Oh. One bullet in the head. It's all over. He He's got no kid as well. He's got to speed it up. How do you lose a round like this? As Fox with the M4, like you mentioned, Pilly, he has no head armor. He's got an M4 slowly sneaking up. Spots one, looks for the second kill. He gets oh. the frag. He and time? he should get the defuse with 5 HP. 5 HP away from losing to 1 P to 50 and 4 Glocks. Here we got a bit of a cooking lesson coming out from Alpha Red. You know, they're going to prepare a little bit of Pad Thai, maybe some green curry, and they're also cooking their economy, Blair, because <laughs> that's how you throw it all away. You oh need the Lord. money on Dust 2, man. You need the utility to be able to stop the T's from running wherever they want to run. You need the AWP on Olivia because he's going to win you the game with it. But they have cooked their money against the full eco. Oh, unbelievable. All right. Lucid Dream now <laughs> just going to run the sort of default, default dance. Two players on either side of the map. Maybe come back towards mid for a bit of mid control when they so fancy. And uh, if any of these C2s get too aggressive, I do put my money on PTC to put a bullet in them with the AWP.
Well, for the time being, again, like we mentioned, the pistol round, s super passive play coming from Lucid Dream. And they are waiting for Alpharet to make the first move. But again, Alpharet as well. They do have, uh, they do have Olivia once more uh, playing towards short. That is Piratch. I'm just going to stick with Piratch. It's so confusing to say Olivia all the time because that is his actual in-game uh, alias. But yeah. He's playing a little bit aggressive towards short, trying to find the first pick. He's got that arc scoped in as well. And the fact that no one's coming towards short means that they should be aware Lucid's either going to be going for a B hit or they're going to be trying to come in from long. But the thing is, Alpha Red not really bothering going for long contestation. They have STK, but he just has a glo Sorry, he just has a UMP. He's just going to be trying to spot, shoulder spot out something. As Lucid Dream, all five players are going to be making the way towards this A bomb set from the long angle. And, but look at this flank coming in. It might be a little too late though, but Hit is going to be coming in here towards the A bomb side. And STK floating around in the smoke. He's got the UMP in hand. KNT will burn a man alive. STK finds a second kill. And Genius is very low indeed as well. They're getting shut down before they're able to get their way into the bomb site. And one by one, they fall. And just like that, that's going to be a complete slaughter. That was so disjointed from Lucid Dream. Yeah, look, they kind of waited around for some aggression to come out of Alpha Red, which never really eventuated into anything. Um, the Alpha Red really just sat around in their positions. Then Lucid Dream went towards the long control very, very late on in the piece, very late in the round. They tried to throw that normal sort of execute, the smoke up onto shore, the smoke into the CT spawn, and then the flashes hide to the right over the car as they run up the left side of it. Uh, the amount of information that Alpha Red was able to get running up mid, they were able to get some pretty quick rotations in, find some nice timings to disrupt the T's before they could make their way onto the bomb site. And that was all she wrote. And it's been the same sort of T side from both Alpha Red and Lucid Dream. These teams don't really seem to understand how to actually run a fundamental T side on Dust 2. They haven't really seemed like they've been through their demos. They need to go for this cat control or take long very early on in the round, find that uh, map control earlier on to be able to go and work some other parts of the map, maybe look for a pick towards middle or something like that, rather than just sort of sitting around and then like sort of going, I don't know, I guess we'll go towards long. I don't know, just throw the execute, see what happens. Just throw one in there, hope for the best. Hope for the best is what Lucid need to do here, as we do have... It's kind of like a half buy pistols all around. A lot of utility, though. This could definitely work, though. I've seen this progression smoke into B, as well as these mid players coming out and catch these CTs off guard. But there is three players in this part of the map. Alpha Red. Oh, my God. Olivia. Oh, does he get... What is this? What is this? <laughs> 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 All right, sorry, sorry about that. It's gonna be, they're just trying to be very sneaky. Instead, they get completely, utterly wrecked. Not a sliver of health being lost for Alpha Red. If you asked me how that was gonna go, I would never have told you. Well, Blair, it's quite obvious. Both the T's will sit in the smoke until they're, they're spanned down by a USP, and then the B guys would sort of just go, well, I guess that didn't work out. Run into the meat grinder, and that'll be all she wrote. Lucid dream. They're looking like Alpha Red at the moment. They're looking so well, scared for some reason. They're looking so hesitant this time, though. They're going to go for the very, very fast long control, which is good. But regardless, Alpha Red, they boosted that player up towards Cat, who's getting a lot of information. That's Olivia with the AWP. And uh, provided that they're able to play some good angles on this A bomb site, I mean, lose the dream. They didn't have any success with this execute last time. It looks like they're about to throw that again. Well, they do, however, have uh, SDK waiting. This time around, he's got the AUG at least. Earlier, he had the UMP. Got some pretty quick rotations on the CT side, the way that they're set up. They're playing retake on this B bomb side on the side of Alpha Red, so... I mean, there could be potential for some really quick franks and a lot more CTs in this part of the map than Lucid Dream might be ready for. So here comes the execute for the long take coming out from Lucid. And... Uh, but a nice counter Molotov. They still have a lot of time to work with. The problem is the utility. They just have the one smoke and two Molotovs. That one smoke might not be enough for them to have a clean cross oh, on over. They think it's a fake, Blair. I oh. think KNTZ was going to make his way back. My rolls is still towards B. They're still sticking around, though. KNTZ, the one smoke. There's a huge gap there. Flash might across on over. And SDK has got a lot of work to do with counter flash again being a problem. And they're just getting mowed down. QQ does reply back. And he will sound like across on over. There's a player there. It is going to be Olivia with the big green zoom banger. He finds another one. And Patricia's PTC does, re does however, reply back. They're taking the fight. And it's all of a sudden to 1v1. And so very close. And KNTZ clutches it out.
so many frags in quick succession, but Alpha Red will somehow come out on top 11 to 9. The tables have turned here, Pilly. And it's the exact same thing that happened in the other round, Blair. The only difference is they waited around to sort of see, sow some seed of doubt in the CT's mind. But at the end of the day, what did it come down to? Well, it came down to some great counter flashes, just like in the previous gun round from you boys over on Alpha Red. They go and they take some pretty favorable trades. And although it comes down to the one-on-one, -on -one, it's just not enough from Lucid Dream, this one-dimensional long execute. I actually fully backed those boys on Alpha Red to go and stack that A-bomb site and just absolutely decimate them. But they played it honestly. That was an honest response where they went, hey, maybe it is a fake, and they didn't stack the bomb site, and they still come away with the win. Sometimes life doesn't go the way you want it to, but... At least for Lucid, we have known that even though they've lost these rounds, the last few, like three or four rounds, they've lost in a very, very close fashion indeed, right? Coming down to clutches, coming down to Alpha Red, having a couple of the players having to go off to someone's deal, rest around back from the hands of Lucid Dream. So I don't think they're going to be feeling that, uh, like, you know, not confident. They still have these pistols. We know what they can do with these guns. And once more, that's a decent utility to work with. So what's the approach going to be from Lucid Dream is the question. We're looking at a mid to B, we're looking at a cut take. Looking like they're going to be throwing those right and left side smokes out mid, like a previous round. They're going to be putting some pressure on that part of the map. And again, they're not really having any luck um, trying to run through these smokes, are they? It looked like it was going to be a mid to B fake into this A attack from Lucid Dream. But when you lose one arm of the push, then kind of flailing with the other one. Well, Nakanti's at, waiting for the flash from his teammates. Flash is not good enough. The second flash is perfect. And that is going to be a complete mop of their beautiful work coming out from the SDK and Kanti's at, ensuring they don't even get a foot into the bomb side. 12 to 9. And now it's looking a little dire for Lucid Dream. Alfred, so they, they won the round keeping all, all the players alive. They finally have some money in the bank as well. So there's no immediate danger of getting reset completely. And that's and right now they're looking a little bit more confident, so to speak. And, and like you mentioned, Pilly, Lucid's playing very, very much like Alfred. Yeah, and the momentum's definitely been broken up here for Lucid. Like, okay, great, you guys got the long control again, but... There's going to have to be something different this time. You're going to have to go back from cat or put some pressure on mid. You're getting long control every time and it hasn't been working for you. So I like this approach. They're getting QQ in the pit. They're going to set him up to throw some cross smoke or something like that while the rest of the lads, they're just going straight back towards B. They're not running through the checklist at all, Blair. They're just going, hey, fairly one-dimensionally, hey, let's go put pressure on this part of the map. We have no control of mid so the CTs can freely rotate, but we're just going to hope that they make a mistake in their rotations and go back towards B and hope for the best, but that's not what Alpha Red are doing at all. They're reading them perfectly. Three players over towards this B side of the map. Old mate SDK is even edging into CT here. But if this duel goes the way of Genius, that could change everything. Flashbang's good. He won't be spotted. Uh, does he? He spots him out. He's going to win the duel. But QQ and CBBK, a couple of quick frags and SDK now. Kind of walking through the smoke. Yes, he is, and he wins the duel. How does he win the duel? In the meantime, everyone else dies on the B bomb site. And like you said, Alfred reading this very, very comfortably, and Lucid Dreamer relying on individuals having to win one on one duels to somehow open up a part of the map. It's not just that, they're not fundamentally playing the map like in terms of just getting the map control, they're really focusing on this style of, hey, okay, we're getting long control, and they're so tunnel visioned on, we have long control. Okay, good, you guys got long control. But they're thinking only in terms of, hey, what can we do with this control of this part of the map? Well, we can throw and execute. We can try and like run up on A or something fairly quickly. Oh, we could be really sneaky and throw our execute and then go very quickly back to B. But on Dust2, if you're not... Like, fundamentally, the way you see all these Euro teams play is they put so much pressure on Cat and mid that you can't freely rotate between the bomb sites. Lucid Dream aren't doing that at all. They have no mid control. And Alpha Red, every single time you see Old Mate peeking up mid or he's on top of Catwalk getting a lot of information, which is allowing Alpha Red to rotate a lot more freely with no pressure whatsoever. And all the momentum here seems like it's gone for Lucid Dream. Now they're going for a bit more of a, uh, I guess it, I would call it a bit gimmicky, just walking up catwalk behind this Xbox smoke. Maybe they have an execute to throw on top of this, but this could definitely work if they catch Olivia off at the right timing. That was close. He could have easily hit at least one of these guys instead. He will toss in the Molotov, falls on back. Okay, so the fact that there's... Oh, oh my, my god, what is that? That is such a good nade, and he's re-aggressing. <laughs> he's getting away with it. Livy is just destroying these guys, Blair. 
and now it's going to force their hand. Now they have to go for the play. They wanted to have a more uh, thought-out setup, and he's still around. Finds another one in the smoke, and he's pushing it. He's still standing in the smoke. This guy's completely lost his mind. <laughs> And now one player left, and they don't know there's a guy in the smoke right behind them, and like a oh, madman almost blood, gets yeah. a knife, but can't he said will steal that away. I love watching him play at times. This is ridiculous. Yeah, Lucid Dream, I mean, again, a very, very one-dimensional round. There's no depth to their play on this T side at the moment. They're kind of just running whatever the set call is. That, that is, seems fairly easy for Alpha Red to rotate and read. All it's really taking for Alpha Red to break down these plays is a couple of good counter flashes, some good positioning or reads from some of their individual players, and they're able to come away with it fairly easily. Doesn't take any kind of complicated solution from Alpha Red to be able to deal with what Lucid Dream is uh, throwing at them because Lucid Dream's not throwing a complicated approach. It's a simple solution to a simple problem. Again, one dimensional play, they're going to throw this this uh, progression smoke out, but this has been read perfectly by Alpha Red. Three players on this B bomb site ready to fight. Even Olivia's over here. Oh, this is going to be a slaughter. They will, however, sneak on out, and it's going to get Olivia again. Finds two kills before he finally gets taken down, but there's his teammates there to pick up the rest of the pieces. And Wannafly stuck in a corner, flashed, bloodied, and brutalized as Alpha Red will get to map point, Pilly. 9-6 to 59. They haven't dropped a single round of CD side yet. And this look, is ridiculous. I gotta say, like, fair go, Lucid Dream have a pretty abysmal T side. I'm not afraid to say it. Like, this is just not impressive whatsoever. But if that break of momentum had never come out with the pause and with Lucid Dream being uh, leading so heavily, I don't know if Alpha Red would have ever been able to come back into this game. And unfortunately, we live in the parallel universe where someone had a technical issue and that happened. Now K and T Z get aggressive towards low, lower, and that's a great one-two setup there. Didn't Again, think the it's, a, it's a classic. Was it's a classic repeat. It's a classic uh, yeah. aggression. That was a great. They, that literally could have been a five on three. It's a five v three. It that had to be, be a five v three. three. Yeah. And that now it's a three on three, which usually would favor the T's. Are you surprised? I think in this particular <laughs> scenario, it really depends on this short duel, right? It's gonna be. It's gonna be interesting to see how that sort of goes. But lucid dream, they're definitely setting themselves up in a good spot if they take long. But they seem hesitant to take long. They don't want to deal with one of these CTs on an off angle potentially. STK, he's got the world on his shoulders here. He's got a bit of utility to back it up as well. If he finds the right timing, this could be great for Alpha Blair. Well, Alpha still with it. There's no man advantage, but now 2v2, and it's all under this man waiting. The Merald with the AUG won't rattle off a single shot, leaving it all on Mr. Fox Z or Fox Z, depending on which part of the world you're from. Now, Flame's gonna keep him at bay for a while. If he gets his first frag, this really work out, and he does get the kill, although Is 12 that? HP. He's flying, he's flying up short, exactly, and fighting by himself. Ooh, he sees him. He sees him. Nate's gonna sail in. But QQ will take the peak, and Lucid Dream will finally get the first round on board after what has felt like a lifetime. And that should have been an alpha red round, but exactly what you said. It's a re-aggression that kills it. What could have been a five on three situation that they just float back towards the bomb sites, play things nice and safe, but ends up being an absolute disaster. Can we have a little bit of appreciation for Mr. Olivia, aka P Ratch, who's on twenty nine frags here? We definitely can. He's he's been the better of the two authors in this series in particular, and that's something that I can definitely say about PTC. When he's on, he's on, but when he's not on, he's r not really getting it together between maps. It's either a good series for him or not a good series for him. And at the moment, Felivia is really showing him up. Alpha Red overall on the CT side are playing fantastically. Some great play off of each other and some gate flashes. Here's the pressure on middle by Lucid with those smokes, but are they going to commit to mid to B? It seems so. This is where I'd like to see Alfred either push out and try to take the fight at mid or push into his tunnels. But yep. both the players playing inside a B bomb side, they can easily get pincered, but Lucid Dream's again gonna relinquish whatever map control they had. I kind of thought that they would as well, because Wannafly, he was really waiting for that long aggression to come out as a result of those mid to B smokes coming out from uh, the lads over on. Uh, on Lucid, he's expecting Alpha Red to push towards long, but SDK is just waiting for him to peek, and he peeks too early with no flash from his teammate. The trade's not gonna come out. SDK just a bit of damage and runs back to the bomb site. They're not throwing away this man advantage in particular. And now Lucid Dream heading back towards that middle area. Going to try to resolve the round in a mid to B. But when you got Fox and uh, my rolls in particular, 
over towards that B-bomb site. That's going to be difficult to deal with. Not to mention STK getting this cat control. He could fast flank them. Oh, the bullet just whizzing past his little toes as Genius is going to be charging in. He needs to at least get one frag, which he will, and Meryl's still very much alive. He doesn't need to really contest it. He can just hold on to tunnels so that a retake is going to be easier for his teammates. It's a 4v2. Instead, it's going to push him through the smoke, gets taken down by QQ, making it a 3v2 and a very winnable round indeed for Lucid Dream. Bomb ticking away, Molotov keeping the CDs at bay, not able to push through the door, and... You see they smoke themselves off, probably trying to use that to an advantage with QQ. He's hitting everything right now. Somehow clinging on the precipice of defeat. He's looking for more, tapping away, won't get the kill. Oh, CBBK, but KNTZ will say no more. This is it. The round is done and the map is also going to go the way of Alpha Red. What an absolute turnaround, Mitch. That was ridiculous and I think that this might be a moment that I look back on.